The recycling lie? School bans hard balls in Toronto? Batman bust pedophiles in British Columbia? Cancer sniffing dogs? Chicken poop hamburgers? Yes, it's all coming up on the Animal Politics Show. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Fat Cat and this is another edition of the Animal Politics Show. It is November 19th, 2000 and... Wait, wait, wait a second. Oh my goodness, I am so terrified. What are we going to do in Toronto? What are we going to do? Oh, it's, it's, it's a soccer ball. Yes, everyone, now playing with soccer balls, and volleyballs, and baseballs, and basketballs, and any kind, of, even tennis balls are banned in certain Toronto public schools, okay? Even skipping ropes are banned in some Toronto schools, says school principal of Earl B. Elementary School, Alicia Fernandez, it was total disrespect for rules and total disregard, said Principal Alicia, adding that parents, teachers, and students have been struck by rogue balls. <laughs> we have very limited space in the playground, says Principal Alicia, so it's hard to monitor those balls as they're flying around, yes. We can't keep track of all those hard balls in the playground. Those children, those rogues, have total disregard and respect for me and total disregard for my rules. We have to ban balls and playgrounds. <laughs> yes, yeah, soccer balls are banned. <laughs> Twelve-year-old children are being arrested for doodling on desks. <laughs> Eleven-year-old girls are being arrested for having a lemonade stand without a permit, yes. You need to get permission, little girls, to have a lemonade stand from your government. <laughs> Pay the money or else those lemons are dangerous. They're, they're rogue lemons. <laughs> Someone might get hurt. You're not showing enough respect. You're not showing enough regard for the rules. <laughs> Let us vaccinate you without getting parental consent. <laughs> yes, children, we will take away your balls. <laughs> we will vaccinate you without permission from your parents. <laughs> we will arrest you and send you off to jail for doodling on a desk. <laughs> we will make you run backwards from a Gardasil vaccination for sexually transmitted diseases. <laughs> we'll give you a shot for this when you're only 11 years old, 10 years old, and don't forget the Ritalin. <laughs> Take your Ritalin or you will be showing total disregard and disrespect for the rules of society. And if you challenge us, we will label you as having a psychological disorder called oppositional defiance disorder <laughs> and you'll need medication for this and if you want to opt out opting out is a is a psychological disorder <laughs> remember a parent in germany wanted to opt out of the public school system they said she was crazy they needed medication you could be fined or even go to jail for not sending your kid to Principal Alicia. <laughs> Check out this video. News you think is fake, but is actually real. Would you support a ban on having balls in Toronto schools? Considering the administration of some of these schools, I'm hardly convinced a ban is necessary. This past week, for example, a person accidentally got hit by a rubber ball. And the immediate result was a ban on all games that use these dangerous balls in that school. Games that have been around this earth since feet could kick and balls could roll and children play.
But what a great piece of wisdom this ban is. Imagine earlier days, the horror of growing up in barbarous times when balls were kicked and kids kicked them. In some cases, chased them on grassy meadows, batted balls, caught them, bounced and threw them. How did the pioneer generations cope with the terrors of tennis and ping pong, the carnage of badminton and football, baseball and soccer? I'll tell you, they lived short, happy lives and went to their graves with all sorts of bumps and bruises, cut lips and dented shins, wobbly teeth and shaky knees. It was not a tidy picture in some of the early funeral homes. But we're enlightened now, especially in Toronto, which is a kind of Shangri-La for nanny staters. They tax grocery bags up here. It saves the planet, you know. Now, for the sake of some parental noggin getting hit by a stray soccer ball, Toronto school may ban, prohibit and stay any form of childhood amusement whatsoever that involves motion, coordination, anything spherical, elastic and inflated, and most emphatically, fun. There was a year, for example, the Toronto School Board ripped up a mountain of playground equipment for fear someone might slide down a slide the wrong way. It's one thing to protect children. It's another thing to wrap them in regulatory gauze and smother them in utterly risk-free activities to so protect them that they never see life in any of the random, sometimes even hurtful manifestations it has. The world is not friction-free, and it never will be. But consider the children is, I guess, just a cover for another cover. In other words, the school is protecting its well-padded and utterly shielded bureaucratic backside from any potential backlash or useless lawsuit by prescribing against all play activities that children actually like to protect it, the school, from legal hassle. Pity. A bit of mild daring might also be a useful example to set the children. But if you're going to ban their ball games, chances are that showing them a little daring is not on the curriculum either. As another sage has pointed out, we're only truly safe when we can't do anything at all. And that comforting state usually comes underground and with a tombstone. Yes, Rex Murphy. Complain all you want about hard balls being banned in school. <laughs> But don't mention the 12-year-old girl being arrested or 11-year-old girls getting busted for running a lemonade stand without a permit or the Gardasil vaccines that made a, a girl sleep for 23 hours in a row, making others drop dead and others run backwards. Yes, don't mention this. Those little children can protest all they want, but it won't change the essential fact of what the public school is. Where does it come from? Who pays for it? Who gave the land for them? Who benefits from them? <laughs> now, I want to turn our attention to, speaking of students, to teens in British Columbia who are actually trolling pedophiles, doing a, a cop's job, so it seems, but instead of busting the pedophiles, Police are spending more time busting the teens for exercising vigilante justice. <laughs> yes, you're disregarding their rules. You're disregarding their jobs by taking justice into your own hands. Kind of like in Britain, some people have been charged with murder for protecting themselves as criminals break into their homes and they take defense against the criminals. They stab them or... Or they use self-defense. You get charged with murder. Yes, leave justice up to the professionals. Otherwise, they will ban hard balls. <laughs> yes, my children. It's all about being safe. You must be safe. The little children in the playground need to be safe. Balls are dangerous. <laughs> Why not just strap them down? They sit down on their little desk with their little legs and giant clamps come up and, and clamp them to the desk. They can't move. Then they'd be, they'd be very safe. Yes, there wouldn't be any liability issues from lawyers. <laughs> and Principal Alicia would be very, very happy. 
<laughs> but watch this clip of teens in British Columbia filming pedophiles. What cops should be taking care of. Teen justice vigilantes are taking matters into their own hands. <laughs> This guy is a pedophile. He's here for a 15-year-old girl. Oh, yeah? Yeah, really? I'm a liar. Why are you here then? Who are you waiting for? <laughs> 